Hello, and welcome to this presentation on the redirection of lymphatic fluid. My name is Kathleen Helen Lisson. I am a lymphedema therapist. I'm also board certified in therapeutic massage and bodywork. I practice in San Diego, California, the United States of America. And we're talking about lymphedema. Lymphedema is a chronic inflammatory condition. It's a result of a functional overload of the lymphatic system. The lymph volume, the amount of lymph we need to get through the system is exceeding the lymphatic transport capacity, the lymphatic system's ability to get that fluid to its destination. So let's look at the lymphatic system. We're gonna be focusing on the superficial lymphatics in this presentation. It all starts with the lymph capillary that's beneath the epidermis that's going to take the lymphatic fluid into the system. Then it goes into pre-collectors and then into lymph collecting vessels. And then in a properly working system, that is going to take the lymph towards a lymph node. Let's look also at the difference between the superficial versus the deep vessels as far as how and where they travel. So lymph collecting vessels are subcategorized into superficial and deep vessels according to their anatomical relationship to the fascia. The deep collecting vessels accompany arteries, but superficial lymph collecting vessels have no such preference. They are not specifically traveling with arteries. But where they're traveling to is a lymph node. And lymph nodes, as we know, play a critical role in lymphatic function. They filter the lymphatic fluid, they generate immune responses, they contain pathogens. Often my clients will say, what is a lymph node? Where are they? And I point them towards two of the biggest ones in their body. And I say, this one gets bigger when you're fighting an infection. That is one of your lymph nodes. And the lymph exits the lymph nodes through the post-nodal collecting lymphatics, eventually draining into the thoracic duct and right lymphatic duct. If you want to put your hands right above your clavicles, that's where this is, which in turn discharge lymph at the large veins at the base of the neck. So let's think of the difference between edema and lymphedema if there's swelling in the lower limb, but those lymph collecting vessels are unharmed that that fluid collection is edema. It's a high output issue. There's just too much swelling kind of overwhelming the system, kind of like rush hour traffic. It's not a mechanical issue with the lymphatic system. So a mechanical issue with the lymphatic system would be uh, with any amount of traffic, there is a lane closed on the road or the whole entire road is closed and you have to take a detour. So in lymphedema, there's a reflux of fluid to the lymph capillaries to transport that excess fluid. So that's like, it's the highway, it's, there's, the road is out, there's a detour and you're going on these side streets to try to get to your destination. So there's two ways that the body reacts to lymphedema. Again, what we're talking about today, this dermal backflow, the reflux of lymph to the skin, and then it's gonna go through the skin until it can get to an area that doesn't have an issue. So it can go back into the lymph lymphatic system, and then eventually the deeper lymphatic system uh, superficially, and then eventually get to that lymph node. And then there's also uh, times in different clients, different patients, which will have regenerating lymphatic vessels. So how we know about dermal backflow is because of imaging. And we're gonna look at a research study that specifically uses this ICG endocyanin green imaging. So we can actually see the lymphatic fluid um, with a tracer that is flowing actively live in the body. So with dermal backflow, which is what we're working with, if we're doing MLD for someone with lymphedema, the lymph fluid is flowing backwards from the superficial lymph collecting vessel into pre-collectors, lymphatic capillaries in the skin, and it's trying to get to its destination. So initially, the lymph capillaries and pre-collectors are dilated, and in advanced stages of lymphedema, the superficial lymph collecting vessels deteriorate and completely disappear. Now, notably, dermal backflow can be seen not only in lymphedematous limbs, uh, like the one we see here, but it can also be seen on imaging in subclinical phase and secondary lymphedema. So we can see this dermal backflow before the client is actually doing uh, 
finding these symptoms and having a swollen limbs. So there's mild and advanced cases of dermal backflow. In mild uh, cases of lymphedema, the dermal backflow is localized. Some of the lymph collecting vessels are still patent. So it's just working as that detour route. It's bridging the obstructed areas and going into intact lymph collecting vessels. In advanced cases, there's fusion superficial lymph collecting vessels and the lymph fluid is carried all the way up the limb by this dermal backflow. So I talked briefly about the regeneration of lymph vessels, and this is possibly why some people are getting lymphedema and some people are not with the exact same presentation as far as their cancer treatment. Regeneration of lymphatics with the repair of the original pathway to the axilla can happen after axillary dissection. This may contribute to the prevention of lymphedema. So if we're taking a trip to that lymph node, we have a map and we need to know about this map of the lymphatic system. So we may know about angiosomes. That's a way that we divide the body up and find vascular territories uh, because each territory is traced to this source artery and vein. In a similar way, we have a map of the lymphosomes. So lymphosomes divide the skin into territories that correlate with their lymph basins. You can find these images in an image search for lymphosomes and see this map of the lymphatics of the body. So let's look at the results of this fantastic uh, research study from the ALERT program in Australia. They looked at over 300 uh, clients, patients with secondary cancer-related unilateral or bilateral lymphedema, both the upper and lower limb. And what did they find? Let's look at upper limb lymphedema first, and we'll take our hands and put our hands on our axilla, on one of these armpits. That is the most frequent drainage region. Almost 75% of cases of arm lymphedema will drain into this axilla, yes, even if they've had an axillary dissection. It's followed by the clavicular, and we'll look at this pathway a little bit later. So put your hand up above the clavicle, 41.8%, and then parasternal by the sternum and the rib cage, 11.3% are drained to these parasternal lymph nodes. For patients with mild upper limb lymphedema, 94% drain to that same ipsilateral axilla. And importantly, no patients drain to the ipsilateral inguinal region. What about lower limb lymphedema? Take our hands and put it uh, on our inguinal ligament. These lymph nodes here, drainage to the ipsilateral inguinal was most common. Over 52% are still draining into this. 30% are draining into contralateral inguinal, 26% are draining behind the knee to popliteal, and then 21.6% are draining into gluteal regions. So if you're doing a little math and it's over 100, you are correct. Lower limb lymphedema often drains to more than one region. It's important also to know that only gynecological cancer lymphedema drains to the axilla. Everyone else is draining to the lower body. And the majority of non-cancerous lower limb lymphedema drains to that ipsilateral inguinal area, probably because there's no lymph node dissection in that area. Those lymph nodes can do it. So let's look at some reasons why people might not get lymphedema because their lymphatic system is a little bit different. They have accessory pathways. So in the distal arm, we can see transverse lymphatics. Some people will have a transverse lymphatic pa pattern. That may be a reason why they have a lesser degree of limb swelling. And the proxal proximal arm, ICG imaging has confirmed the presence of two variants of the collateral pathway, this miscagny pathway, that will take the swelling up and over um, to the body from the arm, and that is hypothesized to decrease an individual's risk of lymphedema after breast cancer. What about MLD of patent vessels versus vessels with dermal backflow? 
they used the uh, the dye and they used MLD to move the dye and they found all it takes is a light effleurage technique to move the dye when it's through patent lymphatic vessels. The change in massage is if uh, you're bridging dermal backflow, you need a slower and firmer technique if you're going to move lymphatic fluid in a place of dermal backflow. If you want a deeper dive into this concept of uh, lymphedema management and looking at the ICG and the lymphatic system, um, this YouTube video is a really great resource. And here are the resources we use today. And I'd like to thank you for uh, allowing me to show you some of this information. If you have any questions, I'm on Instagram at Stress Reduction for Lymphedema. And I have many more of my presentations are at KathleenHelenListen.com. Thank you and have a great day.